Hi, I'm Sydney and I play Alona, and this is what you missed in the finale of season two of Edge of Legend. The party knows they must face the dragon god of corruption head on, but with so much power, how could they possibly hope to stop him in his tracks? Surprisingly, as if out of nowhere, Alona suggests diplomacy before the party takes any drastic measures hoping that perhaps, after losing his anchor, he will listen to reason. The rest of the party is increasingly skeptical and concerned about this approach, but Alona insists that before they immediately assume violence is the only answer, they at least try speaking with him one last time. Regardless of their initial tactic, our adventurers must still prepare for the worst. Alona instructs Morel, Toba, and Tobias to stay behind with the town, lest the party does not succeed in their mission. But from the surrounding crowd, Tabitha Graves of the city guard approaches them, carrying a large box. She presents to the party the arm of Arbot, Koromat's former right-hand man, whose actual right hand has been crafted into a gauntlet capable of killing a god. The party agrees that Alona should take the weapon since she so often finds herself the target of massive attacks, and they set out to face their longtime foe. Walking out to the Standing Sea, where Tobit faced the very same threat not 30 years prior, the party stares down the glowing yellow eyes of Koromat in his humanoid form. With the venom of a snake, he seethes at the party, ready and prepared to strike. But Alona approaches the god with an open mind and an attempt to reason. She appeals to a sense of justice, hoping to enkindle some kind of pathos in his incensed state. He insists that if he actually desires to prevent the end of the world, so dubbed Romalgus Day, he will work with the party to find a solution instead of following this path of mutual destruction, insinuating by destroying everything he's giving up. But the dragon deity denies her compassion, for when he looked to the other gods for help, he found nothing. Therefore, he cannot believe the audacity of this party of mere mortals to offer their assistance. He has accepted either he will die by their hand or they will perish by his. Either way, it's up to the elf when it's over. Knowing Koromat has allies, although ignorant to who this elf individual is he's referring to, the party persists, encouraging him that he could still make a difference in spite of his current path. Lothier cites this current cycle of destruction and professes his hopes that they can change it, insisting mortals and gods alike have the capacity to change. Koromat rejects them once more, for he is the dragon god of corruption, lies, manipulation, and venom. He is born in his divine nature to feed those that are the worst of the mortals themselves. But somewhere, something shifts. The party refuses to back down, and they use all of their various abilities to reason, influence, and encourage their foe into becoming their friend. And as much as he resists, by their combined care we see that the once ferocious tyrant becomes a humbled, sober mess. He falls to his knees in tears surrounded by the party and clinging on to the now reignited idea that there might be hope after all. With this, a form appears next to the group. It's a dog. A dog from the death realm the party encountered not a day before. And without explanation, this form shifts and becomes the humanoid form of the dragon god of gods himself, Boromat's father, Azamat. Father and son fall together in tears. Azamat apologizes to his abandoned child for not standing by him and accepting the narrative that he was cursed with upon his birth. Azamat has failed many people, but his greatest regret is not at least offering any semblance of support to his clearly struggling child. He does not ask for forgiveness, for he accepts what he has done is unforgivable and promises to make things right. But years, centuries of neglect cannot simply be healed in a single moment. Moment. Knowing this, the party all put their magic and words into Koromat to help him reform his soul. Divine, arcane, natural, spiritual, deathly magic flows around and through him. And Koromat begins to glow. His scales change from putrescent green to shining purple and gold. He is no longer the god of corruption. He has been newly reborn into the dragon god of redemption. The party has flipped the narrative, changed the world, healed the broken and the damned, and once more, saved their asses. Not by armies and violence, not by war and strategy, but by heart and compassion, learning that sometimes 
that is enough. But it's not over, and the newly redeemed god turns to the party grateful and ready to tackle what comes next. He asks, so what are you going to do to prevent Ramalga's day? Knowing action must come soon, our party goes their separate ways for a time. Dragon is inspired to return to Spygar to finally see his wife and son from his previous life. Shionavis travels the world fulfilling her sacred duty of hunting demons, and hopes that one day she will be worthy of inheriting the crown of Nubia. Lothia returns to Brack to study under the secret order of druids, and research how to enter the Feywild and find the mysterious mud druid that was attempting to cure the cursed land. In his studies, he stumbles upon a piece of paper with the outline of a hand on it, in a language he can barely understand. It reads, The hand is the way in. Ichi determines she is in desperate need of a vacation, and so she ventures off to find some peace and quiet, but not forgetting her most important goal, to find the leader of the non-caffeine compliance coalition and bring coffee back to the world. Alona returns to the temple of Afra in Or to dedicate her time to studying all she can about Ramalga's day and how they can prevent their doom that has been foretold. She also finds something of note on the page of Koga, the god of war, in an ancient text. She discovers the symbol of her god, Afra, passion flower, pressed between its pages. And that's what you need to know from the finale of Season 2 of Edge of Legend. Make sure to tune in Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for a brand new season on the Nat20 Productions official channel on Twitch to catch the newest episodes of Edge of Legend as they happen. We look forward to seeing you in chat as you become legends right alongside us. Thanks for watching!